Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, March 10th. Welcome back, buddy. Thank you. Let, let do the right thing. That's what you have to do. Yep. I wasn't particularly exposed in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Well, I, I just mean in general that saying that's what you should do instead of shaking hands oh, now yeah. just because the virus is uh, making its way around I, the... I met a couple from oh. Canada in Puerto Vallarta mm -hmm. and I went to shake hands, you know, thanks for, mm -hmm. you know, great dinner and I got a fist bump got and fist he's, bump like, he's like, yeah, I'm trying to be better about that. And it's like, I, I totally get it. But I was telling her in the earlier newscast, my flight from Houston to Puerto Vallarta, mm -hmm. That flight was mostly booked when I booked the tickets months ago. Actually get on the plane, less than half full. So clearly there are some cancellations and some ripple effects due to the virus. And you also said that here, you didn't see a bunch of masks and stuff, but when you got to Mexico? I, so what happened was I uh, saw a few people with masks in Puerto Vallarta, connecting flight on the way home, Mexico City, mass everywhere. So I think just obviously a bigger airport, mm -hmm. you know, a major connection point for a lot of international flights. So people just playing it safe. That's, well, I'm glad to have you back. Good to be back. I'm glad you had fun. Yeah, had a blast in Puerto Vallarta. You yeah. know, it's safety is always a problem, especially when you for a lot of ladies and bars and you, you can be in a very vulnerable situation. Right. This story is fantastic. Uh, w women in Florida can now order a shot and depending on what they order, they're signaling the bartender whether they need a walk to the car or maybe a, a call to police. Yeah, members of a student government group came up with a clever idea for women to secretly signal to bartenders or wait staff if they need assistance. So they went to establishments and the, uh, the bars were like, yes, we're happy to partner with you on this. And so they have signs in the women's bathroom with instructions on what to do depending on what you need. So this is how it works. So the owl shot neat means they need just an escort to their car. Yeah, so the whole key is an owl shot, but it's how you order that owl mm -hmm. shot that's important. If they order an owl shot on the rocks, it means they need a ride called for them. However, the bar chooses to do so, so they can call an Uber or a cab or whatever. The, the really crucial one is mm -hmm. the owl shot with lime. Because it means the student is in potentially dangerous situations and needs to the police to be called. Florida Atlantic is hoping to expand this program and they say obviously student safety is a big priority for us. They say they want to enhance student safety and they thought it was a quick and easy way to make sure that students have resources. I think that should be implemented in every city in every state in this country. Brilliant idea and I just realized I licked my fingers to flip my page so now I'm gonna go use some hand sanitizer. All right get busy while we look at the <laughs> rundown. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is March 10th. More congressional caution in wake of the coronavirus spread in the states. Several Republican lawmakers, some the president recently spent time with, are self-quarantining. Italy, where 60 million people are now on lockdown. Everyone in the country has been ordered to stay home. Schools are closed. Sports events canceled. And in Europe, a plane to southern France was so empty that this passenger decided, why not break dance down the aisle? Governor Andrew Cuomo introduced the new brand called New York State Clean Hand Sanitizer. Being made by prisoners. When a man reportedly drunk in his 30s, getting in his vehicle and then shot himself with a rifle in the foot. He was taken to the hospital as a precaution. Antonio police are looking for a driver who crashed into a tree on the east side. They say the driver got out and ran after crashing the, the car head on into a tree. Police found a passenger in the car. He was taken to BAMC. He's expected to recover. Another major bank is accused of opening unauthorized accounts for customers. Federal regulators say Fifth Third Bank, based in Ohio, ignored warnings that its employees were breaking the law to meet aggressive sales goals. Starbucks has announced it's testing out a new cup that's recyclable and compostable. The cups are still made from paper and they should look and feel the same as the normal cups. The liner is not plastic, it's compostable material. Wendy Hawkins, a regular volunteer at the shop, says a wood engraving caught her eye one day. After having done some research on the piece, it was later determined it was from Dolly's series, The Divine Comedy. The couple paid $1,200 for it. Take a look, four-year-old Chris Lynn was eliminated from musical chairs while her classmates walked around. She decided to break it down. By the way, I've had a giant thing of hand sanitizer on my desk here at KSAT now for over a year. While I was on vacation, it disappeared. It's apparently been traveling around the newsroom being well used, so that's a good so your thing. Your hand sanitizer is full of germs. You know what, you have a point there. <laughs> so maybe we should start from scratch. Are there, you can is, find it. Is there still a run on sanitizer yeah, and toilet see. paper and all sorts of weird stuff right I, now? I had shipped orders. We're taking a look outside, but this is live cam. It's not a very pretty 
picture, obviously, no. but I uh, had a, a shipped order, and the shopper said that that morning she was at the store, and they mm -hmm. were just putting out a fresh display of Purell, and when she went back for her second run, it was all gone. It's gone. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. I saw, like, one bottle at Target. I think there was one left. Strange times we're living in. It is uh, a little strange, no doubt about it. And you just saw there on live cam, uh, the fog trying to set in here. We're having a little bit here in San Antonio. It's thicker as you get off to the east. Temperatures right now 66 degrees. It's humid. It's warm. 63 Kerrville, 61 in Rock Springs. It's going to be a warm, humid day for sure. Uh, forecast actually takes us up to about 80 degrees for a high. The chances of rain are pretty low today. Let's take a look at the fog. Uh, visibility down to about two miles in the Braunfels, three miles in Gonzales, a mile and a half in Pleasanton. So if you're watching Mike earlier, we're actually seeing these visibility numbers go down a bit. A uh, quarter of a mile in Uvalde. Rock Springs is actually improving some, but uh, there's going to be some patchy fog here and there in the next couple of hours. Here's something to note. Mold has jumped into the high category from where it was yesterday. 4,800. A little bit of rain that we saw yesterday really kicked it up. Oak and Hackberry in the low category and forecast for today. Up near 80. We're going to put in about a 20% chance of rain. That's it. I think it's the low end. If we see anything, it's going to be a light pop-up shower. So most of your day is going to be really good. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Even more sun tomorrow and some really warm temperatures on the way. We're going to talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. All right. Thank you, Justin, right now. And we're hearing the market opened up. We'll take a look at that coming up. But we've got those low clouds kind of shrouding the downtown area and a couple of these different camera shots. And then we go way northwest. There's 10 out at 1604 Northwest Side. Top stories that we're following for you today. Bear County Sheriff's deputies are still searching for a suspect after a teenager was shot in the chest early this morning. That's right. Deputies tell us a friend of the victim reported the shooting around 1.30 this morning at a home in the 28,800 block of Chaffin Light. That's near Bulverde Road and 281. The witness told investigators the shooting happened somewhere else, and then the guy went home to call for help. The victim was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. Deputies are still trying to figure out what led to that shooting. Right now, there's no word on any possible suspects. Well, ever since news broke that evacuees from China and other parts of the world will be coming to Joint Base San Antonio Lackland for quarantine, the community has expressed many concerns. That's why today the military base will hold a virtual town hall to hear some of those concerns. Now, it will be hosted on Facebook Live by several military leaders. It's happening at 6 p.m. on JBSA's Facebook page. Officials say they would answer any questions about the base's health protection efforts. Now you can submit your questions during the live broadcast in the comments or send them to the email listed on your screen right now. Be sure to include town hall question in the subject line. Looks like it's going to Randolph Public Affairs at us.af.mil. In your morning headlines, the coronavirus does continue to impact communities all around the world. Now officials for the Coachella, Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival have been talking about postponing the festival now till October. That's the big one that features more than 150 artists and draws at least a quarter million people each and every year. Comes after Austin canceled the annual South by Southwest Festival late last week. Officials for the event are also talking about moving the country music festival stagecoach to the fall as well. Well, Tom Brady's off-field plans are already lined up for next year, and it's not what anyone would expect. The six-time Super Bowl champ is opening his own Hollywood production company. It's called 199 Productions, an allusion to his uh, selection number in the NFL draft. Brady says that he is teaming up with Marvel directors for his project. It is a documentary called Unseen Football, Brady's football career, also uncertain. He says, he's, he says exciting times are ahead both on and off the field. And it kind of makes sense now that maybe L.A. would be an NFL option for the uh, high talent NFL free agents. Well, there you go. Yep. In Utica, New York, a massive sinkhole caused two crater-like holes along a very busy street. One of the holes is more than 150 feet wide. Take a look. Officials say the sinkholes caused damage to a water main. Many businesses in the area have very low water pressure and others have no water service at all. They say it's going to take a few days to fix it, but fixing the road may take a while. Been a rough season for the Spurs. We've talked about that pretty often here on GMSA at 9. They're really hoping for a win tonight as they take on our I-35 rivals, the Dallas Mavericks. But it's not just another night for the Silver and Black. Members of the military will be honored and in a big way. Things are also going to be different for the media covering tonight's game as they will not be allowed into the locker room. It's true. This morning we have team coverage of both these stories. David Sears live to tell us more about the locker room change and what it means. But first, let's go to Max Massey live at the AT&T Center with a preview of Military Appreciation Night. Gentlemen. Hi. 
Good morning, guys. We are here at the Northeast VIP entrance, now open to USA members and military members. Take a look. This is what those USA members and military members are going to see when they walk in tonight. Tip off again for that game against the Mavs set for 7 o'clock. And this is what they're going to see when they walk down the hallway and they can come into the game tonight. And there are a lot of events, There's special ceremonies, and there are great deals. And to tell us more about that, we have Matt Harwick from USA. So, Matt, why is Military Appreciation Night so important for USA and so important for the Spurs? Well, this is one of the one of the best nights that we have all year. It's a chance to celebrate America's military, those wearing the uniform now, those who wore it for us, and their friends and family. And it's also a chance to say thank you. You know, if you think about the Spurs, Coach Popovich, the ownership group, they understand what it means to serve, and so does USA. So it's simply a chance to say thank you. We mentioned the deals walking over to you. Mm -hmm. So what are some of those deals people should know about? Well, you came through the new USA VIP entrance for USA members and military members. The first 800 through that gate tonight will get a water bottle uh, that looks something like that. <laughs> um, but there are also... Uh, Discounts on tickets. If they go to spurs.com backslash salute, they can get discounts on tickets. There's discounts on parking. Um, they can go to the merchandise store and get a discount there. If you need a new Coyote jersey, that tonight may be the night to do it. All right. Thank you so much, You Matt. bet. All right. Also important to mention, there is a special ceremony tonight that if you are at the game, you will not want to miss. Now, when we were at the court earlier this morning, we saw what seemed like extra cleaning crews. And in the aftermath of the coronavirus outbreak, well, there are new rules for the NBA. Now, David Sears covers the Spurs for us, and he has a look at these changes that we could be seeing. That's going to be some big changes, especially when it comes to the media the media no longer in the locker room before or after the game. And in three and a half decades of covering the Spurs, this is a big change, and this is going to be quite different for us. Of course, the NBA and the Spurs doing what they can to combat the coronavirus. This edict came down from the league last night. All major league sports are doing this. So what this means is we can't go in the locker room, and when the Spurs do bring out Popovich or do bring out one of the players, we're going to have to stay six or eight feet away from them. More than likely, they're going to come, going to come into the interview room and sit up on the podium. There's kind of a natural separation between the players and the media in that interview room. They're up on a podium behind the behind the table, and we'll be sitting on the uh, on the floor in chairs. So there's kind of a natural break in between there. So that'll kind of help out, and they'll bring us pop, and then they'll probably bring a couple of players out, just kind of limit the access, but no longer in the locker room before or after the game. That is a huge change. Major League Baseball's doing this, hockey's doing this, and soccer is doing this as well. So a lot of the major sports are are taking Taking this up. You remember last week, the NBA sent out a memo to all the teams telling them to prepare for the possibility of playing games without fans. Of course, LeBron James said he's, he's not coming to play without fans in the stands, but the NBA has sent out this warning. They also said they're keeping up with guidance from the CDC on the coronavirus. So that's how they'll be making their decision is, uh, is conversing with the CDC on those guidelines. And of course, you remember Mark and Leslie, last week we talked about how they were telling NBA players no longer high five do the knucks or do the do the elbow mm -hmm. tap or something like that for yep. your celebration and also do not take anything from the fans for autographs don't take their pins don't take their jerseys don't take their basketballs that they offer you to autograph so that's kind of already been in play for the for over a week now so now media can't get into the locker room before or after the game at least for the time being we'll all right see david how long that on lasts. a totally different topic we should probably explain okay. why there are a bunch of kangaroos hopping up behind you. <laughs> we just thought we'd come and hang out with kangaroos. <laughs> cool. Today. There's no, more we're to at it the than zoo. that, though. <laughs> this is one They're of the adorable. most popular places during spring break at the zoo. And this is a new exhibit they have here where you can actually come in and hang out with kangaroos. <laughs> we'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes. Look at them. They're so adorable. Look at them bouncing around. I, know. I want to oh, see you hop like a, like a kangaroo. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them over there. No, All right, David, well, we'll be checking you, 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 in a while. back in with you a little bit <laughs> later on and we'll see what's <laughs> happening. Hopping. What's happening? I almost said it. Mm -hmm. I almost said it. Thank you, David. Right now we're at 9, 12, 66 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A local CEO is trying to inspire a culture of generosity with a unique approach. Why he gave each of his employees $1,000 in cash. Super Tuesday, two 352 delegates up for grabs today in half a dozen states, but uh, many eyes on Michigan, where the results could alter the course of the Democratic presidential race. CNN's Whitney Wilde will have more coming up later in the newscast.
Trading was halted yesterday when stocks went into a free fall. Today, at least there's a little bit of recovery, up 827 points at 24,672. Welcome back. It is Niles 916. Kangaroos in San Antonio. A new interactive kangaroo crossing with K at the San Antonio Zoo features red kangaroos. The attraction just opened in time for spring break. We're pretty jealous. David Sears live at the zoo. Give us the inside look. And you actually got to pet the little furry critters They're apparently. They're so cute. <laughs> what, did, what did we say earlier? It's a hopping good time at the zoo. It's all hopping in right now. Jessica Adam is with me. This is an incredible, incredible exhibit, brand new. Talk about uh, talk about the kangaroos coming to San Antonio. Yeah, so we just expanded this. This is a new expanded part of our Australia area. We started to work on that last year with the koalas, and now we're adding in a kangaroo area where people can come in and get up close and personal with the kangaroos. You have how many kangaroos in here right now? We have 10 female kangaroos. Um, there's some extra uh, residents in the joeys, but they're not out and about, so I don't know if we really officially count them yet. There's one, you can just <laughs> yeah. see the feet hanging out of the of the pouch of, uh, so all the all the adults are, are female though? Correct, why, yes. Why is that? Uh, it's just what we have right now. Um, there's possibility of bringing some boys in here, um, but right now we're just starting out with the 10 girls. And we mentioned this is an open exhibit so mm -hmm. people can actually come in and just be right where we are right now and hang out. Yeah. Although you're, you've, you've got some restrictions on it for to start off the season with though, right? Yeah, so these girls are very new to the zoo. They're still getting used to their new digs here. And so we're bringing people in slowly, um, limited in amounts, but we try to get people in, have them have an awesome experience with our kangaroos, um, talk to them about them, and then we're just doing small groups for a small amount of time while the girls get used to being in here. And you actually have one that, that that's pretty curious. She, she'll she actually go up yeah. to people, but the rest of them are still a little, little hesitant on what's going yes, on. Huh? Exactly. Um, I think it's Opal is the one that will come up to you. Um, she'll come and investigate you if you stay really calm and quiet. Sometimes it can be a little hard for the little kids, uh, but yeah, she's, she's acclimated pretty quickly hopefully everyone else takes a cue from her and starts to calm down and and enjoy the people being in here real quick there's there's so much concern about the coronavirus y'all are always one of the cleanest <laughs> places around me I mean you deal with animals every day so yeah. you have to make sure that you have enough hand sanitizer and soap and everything for people to get clean so this is a pretty good place to come if you're looking for a place to go and enjoy with your kids definitely I mean if you've been here before you know we have hand sanitizer stations everywhere in the zoo we have hand wash places especially anywhere near a concession stand where you might get food there's going to be a sink and soap for you to wash your hands and anytime you come into the zoo whether there's a virus scare or not we need to make sure we're cleaning our hands because if you work around animals or you're uh, interacting with animals you always want to wash your hands that's just good practice so you guys have been doing this for years exactly. so so th this is really nothing new staying clean keeping your hands clean and hanging out with with kangaroos yeah. so it's a great exhibit this is gonna be a lot of fun this summer yeah, yeah. it is thanks for being with us we're gonna go and see some more animals in the next half hour. Oh, so, all right. That is back. so fun. Jealous. All right. Thank you, David. They kick. Be careful. All right yeah. there. And, and, and they punch. And I inferred that it's a petting zoo. Not even close to a petting zoo right there. That's just an exhibit where you can kind of right. It's just go the, uh, go be one with the with the kangaroos with the wallabies. Have a hopping in time. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love the one that was just hanging out in the pouch. I know. It was just yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yesterday was one of those days we all kind of wanted to crawl into a pouch and kind of Luckily, up, yeah. because he's out at that exhibit, it not, wasn't yesterday, it's today. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit of rain yesterday. I don't think we're going to see near as much today. There could be a pop-up shower, but not mm -hmm. a big deal. Uh, quite a bit of cloud cover, maybe some sun this afternoon, some warmer temperatures. It's also Mario Day. I learned this yesterday. So if you think about it, March 10th, so March, and then the IOs like the 10. Looks so. like Mario oh, from yeah, Super yeah, Mario yeah, Brothers. Yes. And you got the socks to match yeah, today. Yeah, I got my Mario socks on, and we got a nice little weather graphic here. Get you set for Mario Day. So uh, here you go, 67, 10 o'clock. <laughs> Sound effects like it. 77, 2 o'clock, 78 by 7 o'clock. 20% chance of rain in there. Again, not great chances of rain. And that, the sun may pop out later today. May give us some warmer temperatures this afternoon. Here's the Doppler radar. We do have a little bit of activity down to the south, uh, south of Catula around Laredo. These are light showers and really out of our area. So for the most part, uh, it's quiet here. We do have 
uh, again, a little bit of fog, and I'll show you that in just a second. Here's the setup. A lot of heavy rain out near L.A., Las Vegas. They're seeing some heavy rain. Reason, upper level low, cutoff low. We're going to be watching this. It will eventually make its way towards Texas, slowly but surely. Out ahead of it, though, we've got Pacific moisture streaming in. So that's going to keep clouds in place through most of the week. I think tomorrow we could be looking at partly cloudy conditions, but the clouds will fill right back in by Thursday, Friday into Saturday. Here's the situation outside 66. We're starting to see that ceiling lower just a little bit. So there is some fog here around San Antonio, 65 Stinson, 64 Randolph. Temperatures in the 60s for the most part, and we'll warm into the 70s here uh, fairly soon. As far as visibility goes, down about a mile in the brothel, starting to see this number here around San Antonio come down some. Uvalde seeing fog, Hondo seeing a little bit of fog, same story, Pleasanton down towards Beville. Dew points are going to stay high. And yesterday we talked about potentially a front coming through Saturday, dropping off the dew point a little bit. That no longer looks to be the case. So it's going to stay humid all the way through the seven day forecast. Forecast high temperatures today up close to 80 here in town, 70s in the hill country. You'll definitely find some 80s down to the south where we could go as high as 84 down there in Katua. Futurecast shows uh, just an isolated shower or two, if that. I think rain chances are 20 percent mainly San Antonio off to the east. And again, this does show some clouds trying to break up and clear out a little bit this afternoon. So forecast calls for a high right around 79. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. 83 tomorrow, 82 on Thursday. We went ahead and took rain chances out Wednesday and Thursday, but they will kick back in Friday. And certainly as we get into the weekend, rain chances look better. But you'll notice temperatures stay warm, right around 80 degrees all the way through the extended forecast. Wow, it is warm. <laughs> warm. <laughs> right now it's 922, 66 degrees. She's easily impressed. I am. <laughs> All right, what do you do if your boss gives you would give you a thousand dollars? What would you do, Justin? You'd take, invest it. Take it. You? Probably. Uh, uh, well, I don't know about right now, but a, right. A local CEO <laughs> did just that. How he hopes this will inspire a culture of generosity. Coming up next. For a lot of companies, one of their top priorities is helping out the community, but now a local small business is helping out even more by putting cash in the hands of their employees. Last year at Christmas time, we, we told each employee that we wanted to donate $1,000 to a charity that they uh, chose, but it was just a writing of a check. And so this year, we wanted to do something more impactful. We gave each employee $1,000 in cash, uh, there was 25 employees in addition to the owners of the company. And so uh, $25,000 went out and made an impact in our community. And, um, you know, based on some of the initial feedback we've got, we know that that number will be a lot larger. And we blessed kids, we blessed families, we blessed, um, you know, ministries, non lots of nonprofits, uh, even just random acts of kindness to uh, the homeless or to uh, a waiter at a restaurant. One of our two gentlemen paid off school lunch debt for kids in the Northeast Independent School District, and that was really cool. So there was just a broad spectrum of giving uh, that was unique to their hearts and what they, you know, felt called to do. You know, Honestly, for me, uh, seeing, seeing the reactions from the recipients is always heartwarming. Seeing the just reactions from our team and what it meant to them and the smiles on their faces as they did it and as they came and reported back meant even that much more because I know that that's where the real power comes from of, of teaching people, showing them, giving them the opportunity. And I know each one of them are going to go do it more with their own dollars now. And so, and tell their friends right and tell their family and just um, that's what's so cool is knowing that what we did here uh, will go on way beyond here and if you know someone with a unique san antonio story or a unique san antonio business reach out to us right now on instagram at ksat news max massey ksat 12 news super cool stuff 928 66 degrees Still to come, have you heard of the Flip the Switch Challenge? A lot of people on social media have been participating, including celebrities. Well, how a former presidential candidate made social media go wild with her rendition. Primary season continues today with voters in six states making their way to the polls. Why the result of today's primaries could alter the course in this race for the top two remaining Democratic presidential candidates.
Welcome back. It's 931. It's Super Tuesday Part 2. Voters in six states are heading to the polls today to cast their ballots. Well, one major difference from just last week in the Democratic race, there are far fewer candidates. As CNN's Whitney Weld reports, Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders are at a heated battle and they aren't pulling any punches. Both Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders have a lot to brag about when it comes to Michigan. Joe Biden leads Bernie Sanders there. He also has endorsements from key officials in that state. Bernie Sanders, though, has been running a very robust and longer ground game there. He also won in 2016. So voters Tuesday will tell the world who they support. It's a mad dash in Michigan. Tuesday is the next major test for two remaining candidates, Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. Six states will hold their primaries, including the night's biggest prize, Michigan, a state that could alter the course of this race. Michigan is the most important state coming up on Tuesday. We need you to come out to vote or to vote early. Aside from the 125 delegates at stake, the results in Michigan will serve as a barometer for whether the Sanders campaign can go the distance. A disappointing performance there on Tuesday, where Sanders won in 2016, and critics will question whether he has a viable path to the nomination. Senator Sanders is a good man. He's Medicare for all push would be a long and expensive slog if he can get done at all. The Biden campaign, meanwhile, hopes Tuesday's contests will help pad his delegate lead. The former vice president has two new yet familiar faces in his camp, former Democratic candidates Cory Booker and Kamala Harris. It's a time for us to beat Donald Trump, and it became very clear to me that Joe Biden is the right person to do that. He is, is the candidate at this point who can unify the country. And a new CNN poll shows Biden has a 16-point lead nationally among Democratic voters. In addition to Michigan, each candidate hopes to rack up delegates in Mississippi, Idaho, Missouri, North Dakota, and Washington state. The thing to remember about Michigan is this is a battleground state, so whichever candidate wins Tuesday will likely feel much more confident boasting to voters in other states that he is the candidate who can win in what was, as of 2016, Trump country. In Washington, I'm Whitney Wild. Live cam giving us a look outside. Not a very pretty spring break day today, but not as bad as yesterday. No, and I think as we get into the afternoon, things will improve some. But yes, there's a little bit of fog out there right now. We're seeing some fog across parts of South Texas this morning. Let's start with the temperatures, though. They're warm, 66 here in San Antonio. Basically, everybody's in the 60s at this point, and we'll be close to 80 this afternoon. So uh, once we get a little bit of sun, and I think we will this afternoon, that'll boost those temperatures. Visibility, though, on its way down. Look at Randolph, down to uh, about 0.4 miles there. New Braunfels down to a mile. Kerrville down to two and a half miles. So this fog's going to get a little bit worse before it gets better. But give it a couple of hours and we'll see visibility improve. Across the area, Uvalde's still seeing some fog. Rock Springs improving. Places like Gonzales seeing some improvement just within the last hour. Here's our forecast for today. Up to 79 for a high. About a 20% chance for shower. It's a very slight chance. Most likely we're all going to stay dry. And again, we'll see uh, hopefully some peaks of sun this afternoon. Some even warmer temperatures on the way tomorrow. Well, more on that forecast in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Mr. Horn. Right now we're looking at uh, transguide cameras around town. And yeah, we had some fog earlier and it's going to be a problem for some of you. Look at it kind of hanging around there at uh, 35 in Evans. But of course, these cameras are somewhat elevated, so don't be deceived. Things may not be quite as bad. Well, it is spring break, and if you're looking for something fun to do with kiddos, the San Antonio Zoo has a whole lot to offer. Sure does. Earlier, David Sears hanging out with kangaroos, and now he's with some other animals. David? Hi, David. Hey, Mark and Leslie, do you guys remember when you were kids and you used to go to the zoo, there'd be like an elephant and a giraffe? Not this zoo, but in other zoos. would be yeah, like an lion. elephant and giraffe and maybe an alligator and some reptile, and that was it. And then you go home. This is an entertainment mecca here at the San Antonio Zoo. We showed Aww. you the kangaroos earlier, an exhibit where you can go in and hang out with them. And this particular exhibit is called Jungle Boogie. So they can bring animals out and once again interact with folks that show up. And Kara Campbell is one of the people that enjoys this event and this exhibit. You bring the animals out. Talk about this and what kind of fun you have actually being able to interact with animals and the kids at the same time. Um, it's the best. It's actually one of my favorite reasons why I love my job so much is not only do we actually have animals that we work with on exhibit like our Jags and Bears and Gibbons, but we also have animals like Cindy here, our son Conyer, as well as many other species that are a part of our animal ambassador team. 
And these animals are so amazing because we get to bring them out and make that really cool one-on-one -on -one connection with guests. <laughs> and they have a lot of personality, as you can see right here. <laughs> so, Cindy, are you excited about spring break and all the kids coming? <laughs> Come on, Cindy, talk to me. Yeah, there she's like, I don't know, I got it, I got it. She's nervous like a lot of people. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, you sure? When are you all open, Sydney? <laughs> Sydney, tell me when you're open. Okay. Yeah. Oh. She's like, oh wait, now I can. Okay. You can't play with that. That's not a choice. I think, I think she said, what did she just say? Well, she said our zoo is open from 10 until 7, all during Jungle Boogie. And Jungle Boogie, like he said, is just an entertainment mecca. We've got a lot of fun stuff going on. We have animal presentations every day at 2 o'clock. So if you want to see those cool animals, whether it be Cindy, our son, Conyer, we have snakes, lizards, Ooh, snakes. even small. Did you hear that, Leslie? Snakes. Snakes. We got big snakes and small snakes. That's Ooh, a no. Big snakes That's a no. Snakes. No, 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 no. It's so. pretty bird. But Jungle Boogie, we also have fun music and entertainment values. So we have DJs just kind of like spread throughout the zoo, which is pretty awesome because you never know when you're going to run across one of them. You're going to turn a corner and bam, there's some music. You can bust a rhyme and move out fun. with the animals that are hanging out at the exhibit right next to it. There is just so much to do here at the San Antonio Zoo. So just all kinds of, oh, she can bring the snake out real quick. She oh, is. oh, yeah, here. If you want to uh, wait over here, actually. Oh, oh, do I, I want to wait? Oh, oh. okay, y'all hold on just a second. Just a second. They're going to bring the snake out. But she could keep the snake over there because I'm not getting close. I'm with you, Leslie. We're not getting close uh -uh. to the snake. I think we're all chicken. Oh. There it is. It's Snakes. Our, Why did it have oh, to be snakes? Yeah, I am chicken. Yeah. No, 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 you're good. No, no, no. Whoa. This is Look. Noctis. Yeah, this is not Noctis. okay. Desert. King snake. <laughs> a desert king a snake. A desert king snake. They get that name for two reasons. The desert part language. because She's they like... live in Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico, so they like to live in those okay. nice. Gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll touch it. Oh, yeah. Gonna touch right it. The there you go. Look at this. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's a proud moment. What's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. Right. Hey, buddy. That's good. Yeah, you better try to make yeah. friends with them. These guys is that king snakes. Um, they can eat other snakes, including venomous snakes. Oh, so these are good snakes. Then. These good these snakes. Good there's a good snake. Oh, Mostly yeah. good snakes out right. there. So Leslie, that's a good snake, Mark. Well, that's, you can keep that snake. good snake so, right. far away from me. <laughs> all right, I will keep this snake right here. Hey, well, a lot of fun at the zoo. Like. So if you're looking for something to do over spring break, this is it right here. Well, David, right, guys, back to you. And thank you very much. And that fits perfectly <laughs> with a segue into our next little. Talker here. Yeah, well, nine inexpensive ideas for your spring break staycation have, instead of going somewhere, staying here. Having my hot little hands, and you can find this article on ksat.com. Okay, let's start with number one. Okay. Drum roll, please. Take a bike ride if the weather's nice, of course. Nothing right. beats a bike ride. So get, put your helmet on and go for one. Or, hey, Leslie, take a hike. Hey, wait I'm sorry. a minute. Go for a hike. Number two, you go can fly for a hike. hike. That's not on here. That's not on here? No, it's not on here. <laughs> Number three. Explore the backyard wildlife. You don't have to go far. Just take your kids out in the backyard and look for a bunch of little critters. Or go to the zoo with David. Uh, number four, take, I love this one, take a painting class. Yeah, those are fun. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've done that before. Host a movie marathon. Just, mm -hmm. you know, have your bunch of movies and watch them all day. Number six, uh, okay, it's, it says act out your favorite book. Reading lots of fun when you act out your favorite parts. Kids can have a blast pretending to be their favorite characters and you can join them on the party as well. I think that sounds like a great idea. Tour a local business. Factory tours can be cool, especially if they're kid friendly like a candy factory, a toy shop, or something else like that in our hometown. Okay, uh, whip up a new recipe. Now that you have time, why not get creative in the kitchen? Fits into what we had on the early edition of GMSA today. What was it, the apples? It was, with, uh, it was almost donut like donut hole apples. Yeah, something. and he was putting stuff all over it and just devouring it, wasn't it? Yeah. And the last one, have a picnic in the park. Picnic in the park. And then you can fly a kite there too. Yes, and maybe take some pictures of the wildflowers. I think that's a great idea. Hey, right now it's uh, just about 941, 66 degrees. You are watching Good Morning San Antonio at 9. Have you heard of the latest social media challenge? It's called Flip the Switch. How one former presidential candidate took on the challenge and it's gaining a lot of support online. These are funny. Elizabeth Warren and Kate McKinnon from SNL was one of them. 944, it's the latest challenge in taking social media by storm. The Flip the Switch Challenge has two people in front of a mirror dancing before they switch places and even outfits. Senator Elizabeth Warren took part in the challenge after ending her presidential campaign. CNN's Jeannie Bose reports how the former candidate's new moves are garnering a lot of support online. 
First, Elizabeth Warren dropped out of the presidential race. Then she dropped by SNL to thank you for all the all that you've done in your lifetime. Uh, I'm not dead. I'm just in the Senate. <laughs> and then she dropped this video with impersonator Kate McKinnon. I just flipped the switch. Flip, flip. I don't know nobody else that's doing this. They call it the Flip the Switch TikTok challenge after the lyrics from Drake's song, Nonstop. I just flip the switch. Two people record themselves in front of a mirror at the words, Flip the Switch. I just flip the switch. They trade places and often outfits, even walkers. I just flip the switch. Flip, flip. I don't know nobody. It's cute for a parent to do it. I just flip the switch. With his kid. But when a former presidential nobody. candidate does it, I don't know nobody. There were comments like, OMG, this is everything, and this deserves a thousand delegates. But instead of swooning over Warren's flip the switch, some Bernie Sanders supporters flipped her off. She has time for this, but no time to endorse Bernie? And when Sanders' endorser, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, gushed over Warren's video, calling it legendary, Bernie supporters went after her, too. Guys, I'm serious. We need to primary AOC. But then A-Rod and J-Lo flipped their own switch, stealing the limelight. Look, I just flipped the switch. Flip, flip. I don't know nobody here. In this contest, Elizabeth and Kate are up against J-Lo and A-Rod. She slithered in that slinky dress, then A-Rod rocked his fiance's outfit right down to the earrings and Gucci belt. No wonder folks are flipping over these switches. Genie Mose, CNN, New York. Should we flip the switch? I was going to say, I, <laughs> He's looking at my skirt. I don't want to wear <laughs> that skirt. But then again, I should say, I don't want to wear any skirt. So just so we're, we're covered. Justin? Your, your fans are waiting. I mean, this, this has to happen. Uh, <laughs> she, she, he's standing next to you, too. Uh, I don't know. You. This would be like a mini skirt on him. I I'd know. Be like, I, don't, I don't know if it would be television appropriate. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is never a discussion I thought I would ever have on. I know, right? No kidding. Surprise. Hey, can I, real quick, can I say how cool it is to see Ellie, our yes, former Ellie. producer? back here in the studio visiting us. No, no, no. no. She's, she's, she's okay. But she, she's here, she's here. Um, so it's good to see Ellie. Yeah, we miss you. We love you. We heard her in our ear for a minute. We're like, what? We know that voice. Yes, she was. So it familiar. was very confusing, but at this age, we're easily confused. <laughs> There's that. How's Mother Nature? Is she confusing? Uh, a little bit. A little bit this week. Uh, we had some rain yesterday. Not so much today. We may get some rain down the line as we get into the weekend. But last night, you know, we talked about the full worm Ooh. moon. Chances are we weren't going to see it. Well, somebody saw it. Uh, this was out in Divine. Clouds broke up just enough where it tried to peek through there. Uh, beautiful shot. We appreciate it as always. We love all the pictures that we get on our KSAT Connect. And as we look at Doppler radar, a couple showers down to the south. These are light, so affecting places like Laredo and Corpus. We're not looking for any of this to, to move north, so uh, things are staying pretty quiet at the moment. But we do have a train of moisture coming in from the Pacific. So we have a cutoff low right there. That's bringing a lot of rain to Los Angeles and Southern California, but uh, it's also a line for this Pacific moisture to really flow in. And that's why we've had so much cloud cover. That's why we got a little bit of rain yesterday. And it probably stays mostly cloudy today, although I'm hopeful for a, maybe a little bit of sun this afternoon. Time lapse shows that uh, we had basically good visibility and that number has come down a little bit. You saw some sun there and notice the visibility starting to uh, get a little bit worse here in San Antonio. 66 degrees the current number. Dew point is at 62. And most places are in the 60s right now. 64 Randolph, 65 down there at Stinson. And the big picture here, mostly 60s go around and a lot of cloud cover. Again, some of these clouds should break up a little bit uh, later on today. Visibility wise down about half a mile in the Braunfels. We've seen a little bit of fog here around San Antonio at the airport. It's eight miles, but places there in eastern Bear County seeing much lower visibility. Hondo uh, seeing some fog also out towards Uvalde. Forecast high temperatures today, warm. Near 80 degrees here in town, and I think we'll see some 80s down to the south. You'll find upper 70s in the hill country. Not only is it going to be warm, it's also going to be humid, with dew points staying in the 60s. Future cast shows a couple of showers, maybe a storm popping up this afternoon. I'd say the best chance is going to be down here along the coast. If you're west of San Antonio, 
uh, probably uh, no rain at all today. And some of those clouds again clearing out, which will lend itself to those warmer temperatures. 74 by 2 o'clock, 79. High temperature will keep a 20% chance of rain in the forecast. And then tomorrow, 83, 82 Thursday, and uh, 80 on Friday. Then some rain chances kick back in over the weekend. Probably our best shot Saturday and Sunday. We originally thought a frontal boundary would be coming through on Saturday. Models have backed off of that idea. So we basically are going to keep it right around 80 every day. And then maybe some of those rain chances there. So it's going to be warm and muggy. Yeah, we are in a warm pattern for sure. We are. All right, thank you. Thank you, Justin. Right now we're at 950, 66 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back. Good morning. Hi, guys. Coming up on live, Nick Offerman joins us. Plus, Catherine Schwarzenegger Pratt and Barry Sonnenfeld is going to be here. Hey. That's your pal. Coming up on live. 953, a reminder that JBSA Lackland will be holding a virtual town hall this evening to hear people's concerns regarding coronavirus. The town hall will be hosted on Facebook Live by several military leaders happening at 6 p.m. on JBSA's Facebook page. Officials say they want to answer any questions about the base's health protection efforts. You can watch the broadcast uh, live and post your comments or send them to the email listed right now on your screen. Make sure that you include town hall question in the subject line. Morning commute has come and gone. Let's see how Transguide is looking. There is 281 over by the airport and then closer to downtown at Grayson. No problems report on the major thoroughfares around the Alamo City. Not going to lie, I've been enjoying the spring break traffic. Uh, yeah, no do, kidding, right? We do have a little bit of fog out there in spots, especially eastern parts of San Antonio. Visibility should be coming up here soon, and we're expecting mostly cloudy skies this afternoon. 79, slight, slight chance of a pop-up shower, although uh, it looks like we'll mostly stay dry next few days. Temperatures in the 80s tomorrow. Don't they usually give you like a 30-day grace period if you forget to renew your registration? On your car. Something, something like, like that. that. I know I Marcus so. has talked about that before. You, you get like a 30 day window or something like that. But I mean, at, you're pushing at the it. most. At the most. You, yeah. you really should get it done probably 30 days prior to it expiring, not after. Well, this, well, this is just takes the cake. Every state's a little different. Louisiana, apparently they give you two years, but somebody went way, way well, past no, that. Every two years you have to renew. Like here right. we do it every year, right? Every year, but there they have to do it every two years. Right. Well, this uh, officer pulled over a guy in Louisiana and looked at his tags, and they had been expired for 23 years. Yeah, he said this actually happened. This is what uh, the Slidell Police Department reported. This happened yesterday. Our officers pulled over a vehicle license plate. He says, I've been busy. I totally forgot to renew my vehicle registration. I will take care of it as soon as I get home. <laughs> September of 97? Can you do it 23 years later? I don't think so. Um, the see, officers posted on Facebook with a quote because they were so amazed. They'd never yeah. seen anything. I'm surprised he made it 23 years without being pulled over. So CNN asked Slidell to expand on this and you find out if they gave the guy a ticket or something like that or they let him off with a warning. But I don't think, I, how can you let that go? You can't. You post it on Facebook and let everybody talk That's about it. That's right. <laughs> His business is out there for everybody. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Good to be back, everybody. Our crews are back at noon. We'll see you then.